All right, take a look at I traveled among unknown men. This is Wordsworth writing relatively late in his life. He lived most of his life, as I said, in England, but he he has traveled overseas. He spent some time in Germany and he spent some time in France, generally as a young man. He had a child in France. He was engaged in France. He ended up leaving that child and, and, uh, and, and woman when they started to uh, uh, grow apart. Uh, so he has a sort of unresolved anxiety about uh, about Europe and his homeland. But he was essentially a, a homebody to begin with, so he felt drawn to England. And at this point, this poem seems to be alluding to and reflecting to that past. I traveled among unknown men in lands beyond the sea, nor... England did I know till then what love I bore to thee. Tis past that melancholy dream, nor will I quit thy shore a second time. For still I seem to love thee more and more. Among thy mountains did I feel the joy of my desire, and she I cherished turned her wheel beside an English fire. The mornings showed, thy nights concealed, the bowers where Lucy played, and thine, too, is the last green field that Lucy's eyes surveyed. Which is really kind of curious. It takes a little spin at the very end there. It's set up as this sort of affirmative, feeling good about yourself. Okay, I've, I've gone and sowed my wild oats. I've gone into the, uh, the great wild, the great beyond. I have seen the world, and now I'm returning home. And there, there is a sort of conventional, you know, self-satisfying declaration about that. But then at the end, that last stanza unveils a new dynamic underneath that. Underneath that confident man of the world pose is an awareness of death and mortality and spirit that I think puts everything before it into a new perspective. Thy mornings showed, thy nights revealed, the bowers where Lucy played. Lucy, who is Lucy? I, well, okay. We don't need to go into specifically who she could be biographically, but the idea that this is suddenly where she played and thine, too, is the last green field that Lucy's eyes surveyed. So the last that her eyes surveyed, the last thing she saw was England, essentially. The fields of England, the nature of England. And so she is dead. And she is dead and buried in England. So again, you get some proximity uh, physical proximity that the narrator seems to be uh, leaning on here. Physical proximity to this now corpse, but also just a belief that the spirit of this woman inhabits that landscape. The spirit of that woman lives in England, and so the narrator wants to return to there, denying the the physical realities or the real uh, material relationships and human uh, human contacts that he has, perhaps across the sea, really just the English Channel, <clears throat> but across the sea, he is saying, no, that does not matter as much. I am drawn to this, to this spirit world, to this spiritual connection that infuses this particular landscape. It is the landscape infused with spirit that is the more valuable to me, as opposed to some, you know, vacant shore that I have no connection to. And you can see the ambiguity of that, and you can you can bring up all the biographical uh, confusion of uh, of Wordsworth past, uh, specifically I would say the uh, the past in France, where he was a, uh, a, a at first an ardent supporter of the French Revolution, you know, uh, uh, 
very much into the uh, the the overthrowing of the king. Very much supported the uh, the assassination of Louis and uh, and. <clears throat> Uh, and 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 the queen and uh, really caught up in that as a young man and here however you see him as a somewhat older man at least putting on the guise of a wiser man who has changed his mind a little bit he did change his mind in a number of respects biographically he was a great liberal when he was younger he became much more conservative afterwards perhaps by seeing the aftermath of the uh of the uh the the the, the french revolution with the terror and 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 the uh, the beheadings and the guillotine and all of that But here he is couching that in very curious terms. I do love in that second uh, second stanza, "'Tis past that melancholy dream." That melancholy dream is perhaps the idea of, uh, uh, you know, uh, equality among men, la liberté, égalité, fraternité, uh, the, the, the idea of the, or the dream of the French Revolution that we just have to kill all of the, uh, all of the aristocrats. So here he seems to be looking at that fondly, uh, but a little bit, okay, that was silly of me. That was just a fad. Nor will I quit thy shore a second time, for still I seem to love thee more and more. Which is interesting when you look at that, because so much of this uh, poem is structurally simple, with simple end stop lines where the word at the end of the line kind of completes a unit of thought, as it's called, and then that, uh, that sets up the rhyme scheme, so each line is its own thought, except for this one. So here he is, he starts off essentially apologizing to England, uh, nor England did I know then what love I bore to thee, like he's returning home kind of sheepishly saying, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave you, baby. Tis past that melancholy dream, nor will I quit thy shore a second time. And that a second time completes the unit of thought of the previous line. Nor will I quit thy shore. That could be seen as a unit of sense. But the real caveat in there that he's perhaps trying to hide is that he's already done it. And his record on this, his record of loyalty, of fealty, of fidelity to England is somewhat suspect. So he buries that on the next line. It's a neat little way of hiding it. Maybe the poem is uh, is doing this uh, deliberately. Maybe it is an unconscious way of uh, Wordsworth trying to hide this sense of guilt. We all know what it's like to apologize for something, but not necessarily uh, know that or to know that your that your credibility is a little strained on that. But you can see that little blip in there. Among thy mountains did I feel the joy of my desire, and she I cherished turned her wheel beside an English fire. That is setting up or seeping in the idea of Lucy. So the poem is an unveiling itself very slowly to readers. And... That's the process of reading the world around him for the romantics. The idea that you slowly sift through all of the stuff on the surface until you get to the reality within. A spiritual reality. You can look out on the landscape of England, but you have to look very closely and Attentively to attune yourself to intuit the spiritual reality within which for this poem the spiritual reality within is this girl this Lucy this simple country girl who turned her wheel beside an English fire weaving sewing doing domestic simple domestic chores in a simple way gives a spirit to the land, gives a spirit to the home that is um, precious to him. 
and that gives the poem itself a kind of mystery. So very much as you see in all of Wordsworth's work, you see this undercurrent of um, spirituality, of divinity in a amorphous sense, and a essential starting point in the belief that the material world is irrelevant. The material world is just a cloud. And what is significant is what is within. 